follows that Elizabeth Garrett Anderson's drive to become the first female doctor in Britain started when she was a young woman. Now, there's a tale that her and her friend Emily Davies were sat by the fireside in their coastal home in Oldborough in Suffolk with Elizabeth's little sister Millie, combing each other's hair and moaning and whinging about the injustices that women faced in the late 19th century. Emily Davies apparently turned to Elizabeth and said, right, there is nothing else for it. You are going to have to open the medical profession to women. In the meantime, I will focus on opening up higher education and universities. She then turned to Millie and said, you're the youngest Millie, so you're gonna have to focus on getting women the right to vote. Emily Davies grew up to find Girton College, Cambridge, the first women's college at Cambridge University, and Millicent Garrett Fawcett, of course, grew up to be a world-renowned suffragist fighting for women's right to vote throughout the course of most of her life. Elizabeth Garrett Anderson also stayed true to the narrative of this story and became the first woman in Britain to qualify as a doctor. Although it wasn't actually in Britain that she qualified because pretty well all British universities rejected her, including Middlesex University, who claimed that she was proving somewhat of a distraction to the male students that were studying medicine at the time. She had to learn fluent French and move over to complete her studies at the University of Paris. She was finally let into the British Medical Association in 1873, and she remained the only woman to be part of that organisation for a whopping 19 years. But she did it eventually, also becoming the first female surgeon in Britain. It was not only medicine where Elizabeth Garrett Anderson thrived though, she had an amazing political career. But firstly, it's important to talk about why her contribution is so important to feminism, because qualifying as a woman is impressive, but, was what, but what's more impressive is that Elizabeth spread that opportunity out to other women and founded the first College of Medicine for Women in London. Let's move on to her political career. So she was involved in the women's suffrage movement pretty much from its inception. Her and her friend Emily Davies, they collected over a thousand signatures for the first petition for women's suffrage in 1866 that was presented to Parliament by John Stuart Mill. Over the next 40 years, she continued campaigning, even dabbling with the more militant wing, the suffragette movement. She was by the side of Emmeline Pankhurst during the Black Friday protest in 1910, where suffragettes received awful and heavy-handed treatment from police, including physical and sexual assault. She stood there by Emmeline at the grand old age of 74. Her political career came to a head when she was made the mayor of her hometown in Oldborough in 1908, where she also served as a magistrate. So that's four professions where one woman was the first. Doctor, surgeon, mayor and magistrate. So. If anything, Emily Davies actually underestimated her friend all those years ago when they were sat by the fireside, because she didn't just manage to become a doctor, she smashed a huge number of other glass ceilings as well. So next time, I'm going to move away from women in science and focus instead on the many women that were involved in British victory in World War II, because it's coming up to the 75th anniversary of the D-Day landings. <laughs>